Jane Tonks and I'm the Planning Officer for Physical Disability in Swansea Social Services. I'm Andrew Hubbard. Um, I'm the Chairman of SAIL, which is Swansea Association for Independent Living. I'm Eleanor Evans and I'm Disability Development Officer based at Swansea CBS. I've been doing some work with um, a particular assessment and care management team in Swansea looking at how we can introduce um, outcomes focused working into their everyday practice. We've been working with a group of service users and with direct payments users um, and then there's been a smaller group of, of us which is um, Andrew representing service users and sale, myself in the voluntary sector, Jane um, and some social workers and some social work managers. Ultimately to, to, to do a joint piece of work with, um, with um, service users and social workers to look at getting um, back to basics about what outcomes are and I get about getting a shared value base around outcomes. Well there's lots of work going on in Swansea around uh, transformation work because there's in lots of authorities um, and you know there's lots of different strands to that and one of the, the, the big strands is looking at our assessment and care management um, and trying to develop an outcomes uh, focused approach because we recognise that you know, there's lots of social workers who want to get back to um, get back to social work values and social work practice as it was, and a, a sense of dissatisfaction really with the way that um, assessment and care management has has, um, has developed. I think it's in, interesting that you describe Andrew the way um, it involves people, you know, looking at their own identity and, and the way that they work, mm. and and it's very much about that, you know, people being having a, um, a relationship of trust, so the, the, you know, the trust between the social worker and mm. the person who's using the service, uh, instead of there being that, that barrier, if you like, between professional and, and service user. It's trying to get back to, to, I, to I, the yeah, relationship, isn't it? I, I think you're absolutely, the word there, Jane, trust, you see, what's wrong, but this is what it's like, is you're sitting there thinking, I'm not going to tell her that or him that, because that might be taken wrong mm. and you ought to be able to say exactly how it is without fear of you know but you don't want to because you're thinking if you're on the old system mm. maybe that's a bad mark mm. um, but basically you, you end up not being yourself mm. and you can't make an assessment of anybody if they're not being themselves mm. Mm. you're not able to say what matters to you most no I think the thing about the outcomes approach is it's about what matters to you most, isn't it? And, um, and then not look trying to fit people into service boxes. The, the assessment we've got isn't really, you know, isn't really matching my needs. But also, I thought it, it wasn't actually matching the social workers' needs. It seems as if we needed to create a new language between users and professionals or whoever, whatever you want to call the two sides. We seem to be. Working together, but not using the same language. It's a whole cultural shift, isn't it? You know, if we're really going to do this, we have to do it in a very different kind of way. It's about changing the, the trying to break down the barriers to an extent between that sort of professional persona, which is about um, you know having all the control and um, working much more side by side with people. That's the idea, isn't it? So things like the Citizens Alliance. Um, I hope it enables us to have a bit of a different relationship with people um, and doing the, the outcomes focused sort of work which is you know this joint um, sort of endeavour if you like with people who use services and professionals. Um, all of a sudden the dynamics change don't they, they change between you know around what we're doing so that we have to see things and do things differently um, and that's the power of it I think. It's the little things that are important then, isn't it? I, it's not necessarily yeah. about the, you know, this, the, the piece of equipment or whatever. It's the actual yes. the difference comes from the relationship that you have with the individual. Mm -hmm. Is it also about um, something about um, moving away from you know, the professionals being the experts all the time on everything and, and it being about the service user being perhaps the expert on what would, how best to meet their needs and, and what matters to them? Traditionally, in, in, in the old sort of, call it like a medical tradition, uh, it's been a passive recipient and, and therefore 
people aren't used to being involved. Mm. So a lot of training there, I think. And that's where I see things like a Centre for Independent Living, you know, playing a huge role in it, 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 it enabling and supporting people even to be able to ask those questions. But I think the most important thing is this, this idea of if you involve people who've traditionally never been involved, it, it, it is not that easy. There's got to be some form of support mechanism, you know, to be able to, you know, you've got to support people to be able to make choices mm -hmm. rather than just expect it. And that's going to be the huge area of work, I think, over the next been, ten years. Tokenistic, mm -hmm. and that, that, that's certainly not what we want. Anyway. No, this is it, to avoid any tokenism, but, you know, we must be realistic and realise that perhaps that's something that will have to evolve over the next ten years. I think even though, you know, people are, are sort of, you know, at work as now, social work and stuff, it can be weighed down with, you know, paperwork, unified assessment, lots and lots of people they're having to work with and few resources to offer and so on. I think there's still a hunger for this type of thing. So there must be something right about it. We must be on the right track. My name's Maggie Hayes. I'm a care manager. Um, and I work with people who've got physical impairment between the ages of 18 and 65 and also adults who've got life-limiting long-term conditions. For assessments to be outcomes-focused and to be truly outcomes-focused, it has to go beyond just a simple saying, right, there's some training, you now know what outcomes are, off you go. I think changing an assessment will absolutely be um, a starting point and it's a crucial starting point, but I think that we need to, it needs to come from, you know, the Welsh Assembly, you know, Assembly members, government, local government, local councillors, you know, the person doing the assessment, um, you know, disabled people themselves, you know, for years they've been part of the system, that's basically said, right, you sit there, we sit here, <clears throat> you tell us, we'll write it all down, we'll go back to the office and see whether or not my manager's going to say yes or no, so disabled people need support as well, social work education, um, does attempt to educate their social work students to not only see a person as an individual but to see the broader um, the broader barriers that they're experiencing. So there is a social model focus that's attempted within social work education but once that person's qualified and they're sitting in a team that doesn't have that perspective all that is lost. So I think there needs to be um, some post-qualifying work as well there to help keep that focus and that momentum going post-qualification.